Um, this is new automotive paint technology. I just concentrated on automotive paint and um, I contacted BASF and DuPont. I tried to contact PPG, but I really didn't get an answer from them. Um, this is just uh, an overview of, of new, not, not new in that you may see it on cars in a few years. This is the stuff that's going to be, is being used right now. Something, some stuff you may know, some may, may be new. So it's just an overview. Some of the information is going to be just FYI for you, like the, uh, how paint is applied, uh, um, you know, waterborne systems, you know, that's kind of, uh, that kind of information you're not probably going to see in the, in the uh, finished paint film. But I think I'm going to. Uh, but it's just background information. We love to know how things are made. I do, anyway. Um, starting from the body out, there's some new plastic types. Uh, the rejection, reaction injected, I can't even talk. Reaction injection molding, the rim um, compounds that were urethanes are now replaced with the thermoplastic olefins. Um, some polyester resin body parts called rhinite are also used for non-metallic parts as well as nylon and polycarbonate plastics. So these will be what you'll be seeing on the plastic parts of the car. Coating for non-metallic parts is, um, if it's a rigid part, it's probably going to be have base coat, clear coat, just like the metal parts. However, some of the flexible parts, since it's difficult to make paint that's, uh, that's flexible enough, a lot of times these are just color coated in the mold to match the body parts. Um, next to the primers, all metal parts are e-coated, and e-coated is just an electroplated, um, electroplated primer. They dip the car into a, a big dip tank, the, 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 the metal pieces are grounded, the liquid that it's dipped in has a charge and it deposits onto the metal parts, and then that's baked. It's a very good finish. And, uh, the, the process goes metal, the raw metal, that gets a phosphate coating, then comes the e-coat, then comes the primer surfacer if there is one, the base coat, then the clear coat. It's a lot of, a lot of stuff just to make your car look pretty and protect it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, primers, and it, which I mean primer surfacers. They're now, the solvent-based primer surfacers are now uh, polyester melamine or acrylic melamine. They're no longer using epoxies. Um, I believe the e-coat's an epoxy resin, but they're, they're no longer using epoxy primer surfacers. And the, um, the film thickness is about one mil. One mil, uh, one mil is one one thousandth of an inch, and that's how the paint chemists me measure coatings, is in mils. They also are playing with uh, primer, uh, powder coat primers. And powder coat is, sounds like what it sounds like. It's a powder that's applied, and then, then it's cured onto the surface. Chrysler is working with improving the performance of powder coat primer surfacers. And powder coats are a good idea because environmentally, the auto companies and the EPA are, are, requ are requiring a lower VOC coming out of the plants, VOC being volatile organic components organic solvents, essentially. So the less you can use organic solvents in applying paint or doing anything else in a factory, the better. Um, and powder coat, the powder coats are epoxy, epoxy acid or epoxy isocyanate. Um, another note on primers, some European manufacturers use waterborne primers. So instead of an organic solvent, they use water. And Ford is, um, is instituting a wet on wet on wet system, which means the primer surfacer is applied, and usually that's then baked, and then the base coat's applied wet, and then the clear coat is applied wet on top of that. Now, Ford's trying this new process of a wet primer, then applying a wet base coat, and then applying the wet clear coat, 
and then baking it, which eliminates a, uh, an, uh, the, the step of having another oven in there to bake the primer. It's probably cost, cost effective. Other places, and I didn't find out what manufacturers this was, are doing, um, trying to institute an integrated system where either they're making the base coat more primer-like or the primer more base coat-like. However, they're eliminating one of those coats. Stone chip primer. Back when I was in the business, the stone chip, or I said, said say stone chip protection. When I was in the business, they would uh, put a very spongy primer on under the base coat clear coat, so when a stone hit it, it would, it would absorb the, um, the impact and not crack the paint. Uh, now they tell me that the stone chip um, protection is a thin film. Uh, well, it's not really a primer. It's a thin film that's applied over the paint film along the, the lower panels. And then sometimes they use this plastic cladding, which is a piece of plastic um, bolted over the coating. Now they, they were telling me that it's Cadillac SUVs, for example, so I'm assuming that the cladding is on the higher end vehicles. One component top coats. When I started in the business, by the way, I was in the business like 1982 to 86 or so, long time ago. <clears throat> um, this was the predominant coating system, one coat. There's no base coat, clear coat, just one thick coat of paint, and that was it. Now, there are no American manufacturers that use a one coat system, and less than 2% of non-US companies use a one component system. So if you see a one, just a paint film with no clear coat, you got an old car. Um, base coat, solvent-borne base coats are made mainly polyester melamine or acry acrylic melamine. Um, the waterborne base coats, which are becoming very popular, which just means the water is the solvent as opposed, uh, is the, <clears throat> yeah, the solvent as opposed to an organic solvent being the solvent. Um, and waterborne base coats come in the form of latex, which can be um, boosted by adding cross-linking resins such as polyurethanes and um, polyesters. And a lot of places are using the waterborne base coats now. Two compo component urethane clear coats are, it's a very good coating, and it's popular in, in Europe and a few Japanese companies, but the North American automakers don't use it because the unions are opposed to it. Urethanes can be nasty. Uh, when I used to spray them, I'd break out in a huge rash. I had to get a full body suit to spray them. So they're, they can be kind of nasty. I think they're getting better, but um, still. The one, the, what you see more in North American um, OEM coatings is a, a one component clear coat, uh, which is, now, PPG is using a little bit of an epoxy. It's an acid epoxy is the cross-linking. And it can either be the acid functional group on the polyester backbone with a low molecular weight epoxy for cross-linking, or the other way around. It has the epoxy functional group on the acrylic and then a low molecular weight acid for cross-linking. And that's the, the preferred um, configuration. And this may also be used in some base coats. Other new cross-linking, no, not new, but uh, cross-linking agents are melamines and carbamates. Also a note on one component clear coats is um, DuPont uses a trimethyl silane additive, which may be, you be picking up some, some silicon in the uh, IR or the SEM of the paint. There are two paint plants in Europe that have waterborne clear coats, not over here though, and one BMW plant actually uses a powder clear coat, which is kind of amazing. Um, a note about pigmentation. Um, the, the, um, the pigment gal at DuPont was talking about the aluminum pigment. She said, you should look at the morphology, because some aluminum pigments are smooth, and some aluminum pigments are crinkled. Some have sharp edges, some are rounded edges, so it's good to actually look at the morphology of the aluminum instead of just looking at it and saying, yeah, there's aluminum in there. Um, manufacturers will have to add what's called passivator to the aluminum pigment 
when using waterborne systems because the aluminum reacts with the water and forms hydrogen gas and then it, the, it, the film looks crappy so uh, they have to put this passivator which is a silicon or silicon dioxide or phosphate based chemical. Application and this is just like for your information you probably won't notice much um, on the finished film about the application but what they use to spray paints are um, they're called high volume low pressure paint system and it's an electrostatic system where they ground the piece of um, on the car they put thousands and thousands of volts in the into the paint and essentially it's like a big magnet it the paint is drawn to the metal part and that gives it like an 80 percent of application efficiency less waste the hand spraying that you saw in the video that uh, skip had is done very infrequently anymore um, it's done for touch-ups and to reach, and, and I'm talking about in the, in the manufacturing, the OEM plant. I'm sure in refinishes, hand springs done all the time. But in um, the, the plant, they have robots, they have electrostatic sprayers. And then the hand spray is only done for touch-ups, door jams, you know, just kind of to finish off where the robot doesn't get. Um, and this is what... Uh, they told me, the paint chemist told me that you, if you do a cross section, okay, if you have what's called a bell recip, which is a, if they do have in the factory, um, the electrostatic spray where you have the robots going through and spraying, and then the second coat is a hand spray, then you may, in the cross section, be able to notice that because the first coat will have, if it's an aluminum paint, the aluminum will be oriented all crazy, you know, not lying flat. The hand spray layer, the aluminum should be laying flat. So you have a cross section that kind of looks like this where the, the bottom, the aluminum, which are kind of like discs, they're in all different orientations where the top coat, <coughs> excuse me, um, they'll be laying nice and flat. So it'd be something to look for. <coughs> Aftermarket paints when you get into a crash and you have to get your car repainted, um, almost all of the clear coats are two-component urethanes. And the base coats can be acrylic, cellulose, acetate, butyrate, or waterborne base coats. Paint colors. Um, I always wondered how they came up with the paint colors. And uh, the paint color matches the fashion industry. However, since it takes two years to get from inception to the factory, it's about two years behind the fashion trends. And there's actually a color marketing group, like a color think tank that gets together and um, they'll talk about uh, the, you know, what trends are in fashion, electronics, anything where color kind of matters on their, their product. A couple new pigments that are being used actually in production now. One is Zerillic. It's like the pearlescent luster mica pigments, mica coated with metal oxide. But instead of the mica being the, the base particle, they use aluminum oxide. And it's more flashy, less satiny than a luster pigment. And it would kind of look like that, aluminum oxide with metal oxide on the outside. They are using a hue shifting color, chroma flare, uh, which the, uh, the, the color gal was telling me, you know, she was so excited, that's the kind they use in the new money. You know, they have that, that, st uh, that strip on the new, mo uh, new dollar bills that, have, that use this chroma flare. Anyway, GM uses it in some silver gray vehicles at a very low level because it's really expensive. So it's not like they use this a lot. And that's what it looks like. Again, it's a sand, like a sandwich coat pigment, a plate-like pigment, but we have magnesium fluoride over aluminum. And then a bit of a cheaper color, uh, hue-shifting pigment is made by the same manufacturer, Zerillic, and I think that's Merle, and uh, it's metal oxide over silicon dioxide. And those are actually used in production now. 
So in the future of paint technology um, is going to be driven by cost and by environmental concerns. They want to go as low as they can with the organic, uh, organic solvents. So they're going to try to um, use more powder coatings, more waterborne coatings. And that's it. I'd like to thank all these people at, the, at DuPont and uh, Ken Perry at BASF.